Would you like to know more about the soils on your property or the vegetation that grows there and its ability to produce forage for livestock? If so, Web Soil Survey may be the tool for you. In this tutorial, I will walk you through using Web Soil Survey, but if you have further questions, you can contact your University Extension Office or the Natural Resource Conservation Service. To get to the online tool Web Soil Survey, I use Internet Explorer and Google Search. In the Google Search bar, I type in Web Soil Survey and click Enter. You're going to want to choose the one that says Web Soil Survey Home. It says websoilsurvey.nrcs.usda.gov. Clicking on that will bring up the Web Soil Survey homepage. This homepage gets lo gives lots of information on how to use Web Soil Survey, as well as information about soils across the United States. To start Web Soil Survey, click on the green button that says Start WSS. This will open a new browser window. Go ahead and maximize this window. The time it takes for this window to load depends on how much traffic the site is receiving that day. What comes up is a series of tabs with has a series of quick navigation areas and a map of the entire United States. What we want to do is define an area of interest, but to do that we need to zoom in on a particular area. Ways you can do this is by using your address or your section, township, and range or any of these other types of information that you may have. Section, township, and range is probably one of the easiest ways to do this. Today we will be using Wyoming. We're going to leave it in the sixth principal meridian. We're going to use section 9, township 23, and range 62. We do not have a duplicate township. We'll click view and that should zoom us in on the area we are most interested in. So there it comes up. Now we can use these tools to further zoom in or zoom out, pan around so we can drag the map image left to right or up and down to find the specific area we're looking for. We can also measure distance. What we really need to do is define our area of interest. We can do that either by defining it by a rectangle or define area of interest by polygon. Today I'm going to define it by rectangle since we'll just be working in a square. And then I'll draw around the property that I'm interested in. This will create our area of interest. I recommend giving your area interest a name. That's all you have to do is just type it in. I then recommend getting a soil map of your area of interest because that is what everything else is going to be based upon. So click the tab soil map. What comes up is a map unit legend and right here will be our map unit or our map. The map unit legend includes the map unit symbol that can be found on the map, what the map unit is named, the acres in the area of interest, and the percent of the area of interest that map unit makes up. If you click on the map unit name, it will bring up a description of that map unit that you can either print out that you can print out, or you can just add this to your shopping cart, giving it a subtitle. it'll be saved in your shopping cart right here. All this information is saved. You do not have to click on each of these single ones to put it into your shopping cart. The next thing you want to do is to go to Soil Data Explorer so you can explore the data that is available on those soil map units that you've just identified. The first tab that is highlighted is suitabilities and limitations for use. If you're interested in these, feel free to explore them. There are a lot of inter interesting information in here, including under land management. We can look up the suitability for seeding with a rangeland drill by clicking on rangeland drill. If you click on view description, it brings up a description of what the rating is and what the report is. You can read that if you are interested. If you click on view rating, it generates a map 
that shows the rating at different colors. So in this case, we have a green rating and a red rating. If you scroll down, it gives you the map unit symbol, which can be correlated to the map unit symbol here, the map unit name, whether it is rated and how it is rated for rangeland drill, and if it's poorly suited, why it is poorly suited. So in this case, the red areas are poorly suited to rangeland drilling due to clay, but the green areas are suitable for using a rangeland drill. Badland areas are areas that are similar to rock outcrop and thus have very little vegetation and are typically not rated. Once you have gotten this information, if you want to save it, again, add it to your shopping cart. Feel free to explore all this information that they have in this section. And, it, and then add each that you're interested to your shopping cart. For looking at grazing issues and rangeland management, I like the tab Soil Reports. This is similar to the tab Suitabilities and Limitation for Use in that some of the information you will find will be very, very similar. It'll just be presented in a different way. I like to look at at the Vegetative Productivity tab, and then Rangeland Productivity in Plant Composition. Again, View Soil Report. In this soil report, it gives you the map unit symbol and soil name. It will then also give you the ecological site that that soil map unit and that soil is correlated to. It also will give you the total dry weight in pounds per acre of forage production in a favorable, normal, or unfavorable year. This is all information that is generated by the Natural Resource Conservation Service and the Soil Survey team. It will give you the characteristic vegetation and the percent composition of that vegetation on that soil. So in this case, western wheatgrass pr makes up 40 percent of the plant composition. Again, this m again you must remember that this is when the rangeland is in good condition. So then we can add this to our shopping cart. This info can be later used to help determine carrying capacity and grazing strategies. There are all sorts of other information you can look at under vegetative productivity, included irrigated and non-irrigated yields for cropland which is also very important if you are in a farming area. Soil erosions has a neat tab called windbreaks and environmental plantings. When you click view soil report, you get the soil map unit and soil name, and you also get a list of shrubs and trees that do well in that area. And it'll give you a description go ahead and add this to your shopping cart if you so choose. Another tab I like to use is the ecological site assessment. This gives you information on each ecological site found within your area of interest. You can click on each one of these and they would bring, if there was ecological or plant community data available, it would go here. However, in this case, there is no plant community data available. So you would need to contact your NRCS office or go to the Ecological Site Information System, which is an online tool where they store this information. If you click View All Ecological Site Information, it generates an ecological site map, which is color coded, and then gives the map unit symbol, the map unit name, the ecological site it's correlated to, and the area acres in the area. I like to have this information as well, especially if it has this plant community data. So now that you have downloaded all the information you want through the Soil Data Explorer, you can go to your shopping cart, which is free. This now will add all the information to your shopping cart and give you a table of contents so you can see what you have added. If you are new to soils and soil survey, I would recommend using clicking the glossary so you get all the terms that you may need to know. I also recommend putting a subtitle in 
the printout that you're going to get. When you have finished checking all the options you would like, you click check out. You have two options. You can get it now or you can download it later. When you click download it later, you have to supply them with an email address that you will they will send your printout to. When you click OK, it'll schedule a creation of the custom SOAR report and then you will receive an email message notifying you when the report is complete and you can download it. If you have a lengthy report, that's the easiest way to do it. If you have a shorter report and you want to get the information now, you click Get Now and click OK. It will then generate the custom SOAR resource report. This may take some time. You must also have your pop-up enabler turned off for this to work. So then it opens a new window. We can maximize this window and it'll load. And what you get is a PDF of the information you just picked. It'll give you the, the, the table of contents, your map of your area of interest, some information on how the soil survey was made, and then your soil map and all the other information you put in there. To save this, you can either click this Save Disk here, or you can click Save As, and then give the soil report a name that you can remember. Click Save, and now it is saved to your computer. You can also print this out if you so choose. Just remember that it usually is fairly lengthy. So now once you finish you can close your browser windows and you are done. I hope this tutorial has been informational and helpful and I encourage you to use WebSolt Survey. This has been Ashley Garls with the University of Wyoming Extension. Thanks for watching.